And back to our top story now. Protests across the U.S. and here at home after the U.S. Supreme Court voted Friday to overturn the landmark Roe v. Wade case from 1973 and the constitutional protection for abortion rights. So, where does this leave women? And what repercussions could we see here in Canada? Joining me now live in Ottawa is Kelly Bowden, Director of Policy and Advocacy for Action Canada. Good morning to you. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining. Uh, I want to begin here. Look no further than social media, and you will see this divide, the pro-choice versus pro-life. When, when you say abortion is health care, let's be very clear what you mean by it. Yeah, and what we mean is that that is the way in which abortion access is protected here in Canada. It is outlined as an insured medical service under the Canada Health Act. And so this is the, the vehicle by which everyone has access to the service here in Canada. It's the equivalent of uh, hip surgery. So uh, before I ask you what is happening here in Canada, let's just get your initial reaction to what has happened in the States. Yeah, I mean, obviously, seeing the, the decision that we all saw leaked a number of weeks ago come to fruition on Friday was a, a deeply depressing moment for women's rights for abortion activists uh, across America and here across Canada. We're, you know, sending strong, positive signals of support to our colleagues and to friends who are working across America to continue to try and stand in support of and, and protect this right for um, people in America who are seeking abortion access. Uh, and then obviously turning our eyes here to Canada to, to make really clear to folks that we need to remain vigilant and committed to protecting and defending that right that we do have here. Um, and turning also to consider that while we have access to this medical service, the barriers to access still remain quite significant in Canada. So looking at ways that we can ensure that people have the financial access um, the travel support and all of the other means necessary to actually make use of the right that we do have here in Canada. Let's dig a little bit deeper into that. Uh, you mentioned some of the barriers here. So let's say you live in a big city like uh, Ottawa or Toronto, things could be easier. But it also has an impact on one travel, so rural, racialized communities, low income individuals. There are things that still need to be improved on this side of the border. Yeah, of course. And so we often say that neither geography, your postal code or, or your income level shouldn't be a, a dictator of whether or not you can access health care service here in Canada. And so obviously, uh, as abortion um, gestation continues, com like the procedures get more complex the longer in term you come. So earlier on in pregnancy, you, the, the types of vehicles that you have for accessing the service are more. And so it really is those complex cases that we see the largest barriers to. Um, if you talk about traveling, of course, you need to consider the fact that people might be taking time off from work. They might have other dependents already. Um, you know, advocating for sick days is a part of being able to also ensure that people have access to um, their full range of healthcare services because these are some of the pieces that need to be in place um, in order to allow people to, to get access to those services, especially if they need to travel from further afar. Kelly, we're hearing this conversation as we see what's happening in the U.S. Now there's a conversation of should there be legislation here in Canada uh, that is specific to, uh, say, a new abortion law. And you have drafted alongside with the National Association of Women and the Law saying no. Why would that be? Yeah, exactly. And it goes back to that very first point that you made that in Canada, abortion care is a health care. And so what this means is that in the same way that knee surgery is an insured health care service that is outlined under the Canada Health Act, and we don't need legislation to protect that type of service, we also don't need it to protect abortion services. And in fact, introducing new legislation has the potential to open the debate around a number of elements related to the provision of this medical service, which currently aren't open. So if you do a comparator, like again, hip or knee surgery, introducing legislation to protect those services could call into question things like, who should have access to this service? Is there a time period in which it's appropriate to give this type of surgery? Are there only certain providers who can give this type of service? So our, our concern is that in an attempt to put a law in place that protects this service, it actually opens the door to further restrictions to abortion. Mm -hmm. uh, bigger discussions indeed, Kelly. I wish we had more time to chat with you, but at Action Canada on Twitter is where you can find them. Uh, Kelly, let's continue this conversation. We know it is far from over. Thank you.